Okay, you ready? You ready, Ariana? Yes, thank you. Three, two, one. 20, right here, we're on 20. The graph 13 describes the motion of two bicycles lists, Akiko and Brian, who start from rest and travel north. This graph right here. What's the total displacement of each bicyclist time shown? So we have A, okay, and we're going to make a triangle under A. We're going to find the area. And then you have B. We're going to make a triangle under B. And you have area. Now, uh, I put the colored pencils away, but I apologize. If you would like colored pencils, color, uh, Chris Parham, they're over there to your left. How do we get the areas? One half base height, right? But what is the base? It's time, right? What is the velocity? I mean, excuse me, what is the height? It's velocity. So all you do is you substitute time and velocity in the area. Let's do the blue one, okay? Triangle A. One half. What's the change in time for triangle A? Three. Okay, three would be the base, three seconds. Okay, what is the height times six meters per second? Well, the seconds will cancel. Eighteen and a half is nine meters. Very simple, right? Is that easy in the go? Very easy. Same concept for the red triangle, B. Okay, so the time passes four seconds. The displacement is... Four meters per second. Excuse me, the velocity is four meters per second. Half of 16 is eight meters. So obviously, A went further because it was faster, right? Covered more ground. Sorry for the erasing there, Christian. I know you don't like that. But I, I've got to, otherwise it will just clear everything. Okay? All right, who, raise hands. Who's confused? Greeny? Trig? It is trig. It is calculus. Number 21. It's both. Number 21. Okay, the motion of two people, Carlos and Diana, moving south is figure 14. It's this one. Okay, what's the total displacement of each person in four seconds? Well, um, look at C. Look at letter C. Okay, um, Ms. Rapp, is C at rest? Is it zero? Is it still? Is it not moving? Or is it moving? Yes, it is moving. How fast is it moving? At two meters per second the entire time. Why? How do we know? Because it's velocity, not displacement. It's velocity. So it is moving. Even though it's flat, it's not accelerating. Because what was the slope of a velocity time graph? Acceleration. So is letter C getting any faster? Is it getting slower? It's not accelerating, but does that mean it stopped dead? No. It's still moving at two meters per second. Okay. Letter D, I'll use purple. Letter D is a triangle. Oh, crap. Letter D is a triangle. Okay. So we're going to find areas. Well, what is C? It's not a triangle. It is a, it is a box, a rectangle. So how do we find the area of a box? Yep, base times height, except it wouldn't be base, it would be time times velocity, or velocity times time. So, two meters per second times four seconds. Eight meters. Okay, letter B, or, sorry, C, well you get what I mean. Letter D, as in dogs, is a triangle, so that one, indigo, we're going to lose, you're going to use what, one half? Base times height, four seconds times your velocity, which is three meters per second. It says three right there, Greeny. This is 3.0 meters per second. We're talking about the triangle, man. Oh, it doesn't go up to three? It goes up to 2.5. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me erase that. What do you think of that, Christian? All this erasing. Okay, one half, one half, 
four seconds times 2.5 meters per second. Okay, Indigo, what's four times 2.5? 12? 10? Half of 10? Okay, so letter D equals five meters. Okay, so the flat line went further. Did C pass D, though? Did C pass D? Did D pass C? Yes. Where did they pass? They passed right at four seconds. Right there. So if I wanted to know... Hmm? Oh, that's five seconds. Clear screen. We should have been doing five seconds in to go. So erase four and put five. Calculations are still done the same way. But you're right. Base times height. The base is five seconds. That's two meters per second. So that's ten meters. Letter D is a triangle. Letter D is a triangle. <clears throat> Letter D is a triangle. One half, five seconds, times 2.5 meters per second. 2.5 is 15, yes. And 15, half of that is 7.5. Hmm? He didn't cover as much ground, dude. But he passed, it. oh, 12.5. Six point two five. Correct. Now describe the speed of D or C rather. Describe the speed of C. Constant. Did it get faster and faster and faster? No. However, letter D, did that get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster? So eventually D was moving up but it passed this guy. Right? Thanks, James. So it passed that guy, okay? It went a total of 6.2 meters. It did, obviously this guy didn't start in the same place though, right? No way they could have started in the same place and this guy pass. Okay, so now how are we gonna apply this to today's activity? Here's how. Okay, y'all go to a new page, or actually go to page 70, 70, 70, my bad. Stop, stop whining. I'm sorry, what page is I? 71 was the one with all the equations, right? Okay. That one. Okay, yesterday we figured out how we got that equation. Now, yesterday we had a simpler version of it, right? We had a simpler version of this. We didn't have this and this. What are those? What does the X mean in the book? means position, okay? What is this VI times TF? What's that mean? Velocity, initial velocity. So this is for something that's already moving and accelerating. Okay? Already moving and accelerating. Like this drag racer. If you went to the racetrack down here, didn't we racetrack and stood in the stands? Yeah? And not at the starting line, but in the stands and you watched it pass you, and right when it passed you, you timed it, and then at the, then watched it pass the finish line, you would use this equation. Okay? Well, Greeny, let's say you're, you're at the drag strip, right? The Dinwiddie drag strip. The starting line's back here. Desmond Greeny's standing right here. The finish line is over here. Okay? When it passes you, it's already moving, isn't it? Okay? So where would you start your watch? Now. Well, now it's already moving, so it already has a initial velocity. Is it accelerating also? Sure is. So from here to here, it accelerated, and it had initial velocity. Okay, and it was had an initial position. All right, so you do not have to worry about this part today. That's all you got to worry about. Yes, sir. Now, Miss Ari, 
if you bounce a ball, or if you drop a ball, or if you drop kick a football, or if you kick a candy bar, what is the acceleration of all those? If you take a candy bar out of that box and you throw it at Chris Parham, what's the acceleration of the candy bar? We learned it yesterday. If you throw something, drop something, bounce something, kick something, there's only one acceleration it could possibly be. And what is that? Gravity. So if you haven't written down gravity, make sure that you wrote down that gravity equals what? What number was it, Indigo? Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Why is the negative important, Logan? Going down. Gravity always goes down. Right, Christian Pagan? Okay. So we can cross this stuff out here. What about this A? Can we put a G in its spot? Yeah, we can put a G in its spot. Okay. Now, what if there was a way to figure out how fast something hit the ground? Just by knowing its height, not using time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so I'll cut the derivation of all that short. I'll, I just won't do it. Go to this one. That equation, you don't need time. If you know how high it drops from, you can figure out how fast it hit the ground. How fast did that hit the ground? Depends on how high I drop it, right? Do we know the acceleration? This is final velocity, okay? Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times your change in displacement. I like to use the letter D. The book likes to use X. I don't know why. What the heck is the acceleration, Miss Rap? if I drop something? Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Indigo, if you bounce a ball, what's the acceleration of the ball? If I bounce this ball, what's the acceleration on that? Mm -hmm. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Oh, greeny. So instead of an A, um, Chase, instead of an A, can I put a G here for gravity? Absolutely. Okay? Put a G there. Write that equation in your book. Yes, sir, because we're doing gravity. So here's what you're going to here's what you guys are gonna do today. Here's your lab. Okay. It's very simple. You are going to bounce the ball and time it from bounce to bounce. Okay? So you're gonna go like this. It's much easier to time it a bounce instead of a drop. Okay? I'm going to take my, f my timer, my phone, and I'm going to go start, stop. You want to bounce it high? We'll go outside and we'll bounce it high. Start, stop, time. Okay. If I cut that whole time in half, you bounce a ball. It goes up. And then it comes back down, right? Let's say my time total is equal to two seconds. Right? The whole bounce. Start. Stop. How long did it take to get to the top? Correct. Half that time. Half that time. So it, the time it took for it to go from here to here is half of the time. Draw that little diagram, Indigo. Draw it, Chris Parham. I know you understand it, man, but draw it so that you can explain it to Greeny when you get out there. Now, that's what you're going to find, guys. You're going to bounce that ball, and you're going to find out how high the ball went. So this right here, Christian, right here, when you bounce the ball, this is your delta D. That's your displacement. Okay? Now, you bounce the ball, right? And it goes up, and you want to know how fast it hits the ground when it comes back down. You want to know how fast it hits the ground when it comes back down. 
What equation can I use to find that out? Riley, which one of these equations can I use to figure out how fast the ball hits the ground? Correct. So you're going to find the velocity squared. Okay, you're going to find the height of the bounce using your time, half of the time. And you're going to find the final velocity using that distance. All right, somebody explain back to me what we're doing because we had some people zone out. How are you going to time when the ball goes here to the apex, to the top? How do you time that? It's half of the total time. All right, Riley, explain it back to me. What are we doing, dear? We're going to bounce the ball. Are we going to time it? Okay. How long does it take the ball to go up to the top? Half that time. Can we calculate the distance it went? Can we calculate how high it went? What equation? Yeah, one-half gravity times squared, okay? Now, uh, you're going to get a negative answer for it, I understand. Don't worry about that. Logan, yes, you're going to get a negative displacement. That's okay, it's the same number. And then, uh, Brady, what are we gonna, how are we going to find the final velocity when it comes back down and hits the ground? Hmm? Hey, uh, Brady, how are we going to find the final velocity hit the ground? From the height. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back inside after we've had a good time. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go to Google Classroom. And, it, guys, it's the same golf ball junk that you were doing earlier. You're just going to put your junk on there. And, and I'll teach you how to – I'll show you how to do the graph that I want. Okay? All right. We're getting ready to go out.